Okay, hi everybody. I just wanted to do a quick demonstration to sort of help maybe our intuition about how uh, threads work and how threads are created. So I have a tiny example program similar to the one that we did in class here. This program doesn't do very much. It takes one argument. Uh, the argument tells you how many threads to create, okay? Uh, we have some fake data buffers that we use here just to give sort of a minimal amount of work for each thread to do. And we create our threads here. Uh, so for each, uh, each thread we create, we run this forever function. Well, this forever function runs forever and it does a very simple um, you know, division operation. We only do this because you you know, on modern programming languages, modern compilers, if you don't do some kind of work, your compiler will notice that what you're doing isn't important and it will optimize it out if there are no uh, side effects like we discussed in class. So in this case, there are some side effects. We've got two arrays. Those arrays could be accessed by anybody, any number of uh, threads. So the compiler can't do much with this and it doesn't really understand how long this is going to go on, so it just allows this to happen. So this thread will run forever. It will do our division for each one. Um, so this machine that we're on, we can see here on the right, has 48 CPU cores. And so I'll show you a tool uh, that we can use real quick to uh, maybe get a better visualization of what's going on on our computer. This tool is called HTOP. Uh, it is a successor to the top tool. Um, that shows a little more detail. So HTOP, when we run this command, you'll see shows us two, uh, two windows uh, divided in the middle. So the upper portion here is what we're interested for our activity today. Uh, you'll see we have cores. Each one of these uh, bars is a core. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, etc. They're labeled by an ID number all the way up to 48. Like I said before, we have 48 cores. Uh, we also get some information about how much memory we're using, how much swap space we're using, uh, how many processes and or threads are running on our system, our load average, our uptime. And you can uh, find more detailed information about all the different stuff that's going on on your computer. Uh, you can see that uh, HTOP itself is our highlighted task, and this is one that we are running. Uh, so you can pull some statistical information from here. But anyway, you can see as these tasks run uh, to some extent, you'll get tiny little bars here showing what we call CPU utilization. CPU utilization is a metric that has uh, some limited use, uh, primarily for cases like this. It just tells us that the CPU is doing something during that time. We don't know what it's doing necessarily. We don't know if it's doing math. We don't know if it's uh, you know, waiting on I.O. We don't know what kind of instructions it's executing. We just know it's doing something. And so when you see a number like 1.3% pop up here, uh, the way that's calculated is more or less, you know, 1.3% of every second uh, is being used to process something is kind of the way to read this. So if we run our example code over here, oops, if we run our example code over here and we do make, and we do test one, so we'll run it with one thread. We'll see this pop, over, pop up over here on the right. You'll notice first off, we actually have two threads. I taught you that the main thread always runs whenever your program runs. So the main thread is included here. Uh, also, there is a second thread. That's the thread we created to execute our forever loop. Uh, and you can actually see this forever loop executing right here on core 41. You'll see it shows 100% utilization. Um, and you know, like we've discussed in class, you have an OS scheduler, so sometimes your threads will get rescheduled, they'll get moved around if we don't take certain actions to prevent that. 
Um, so if we keep watching this for a while, we'll see this move around and we know it will never finish because we told it not to. So we will do um, another example real quick. So I'll kill this and we'll let it die. And let's start again, but this time let's run 24 threads. And you'll notice that now we have 24 cores being used and those cores are being fully utilized. And you can see that corresponds to the CPU activity here on the right. Uh, we can see that 24 of these are running at 100% utilization. And that gives us uh, a little bit of information. First off, it tells us that our program is running as intended. We're generating the number of threads we want. And we know that they're being scheduled in a reasonable way because they're showing up on different cores. Uh, depending on what situations we get ourselves into, uh, sometimes you'll find that you've created 24 threads, but they all run on a single core. Of course, that's not efficient. That will not perform well. Uh, you may also find in cases that we think we're creating threads, but we, we've made some mistake in our code and we're not generating threads. So there's a handful of utilities like this that we can use to uh, you know, gauge our understanding and make sure we actually know what's going on on our system. And we can talk more about this in class as we go on. I just wanted to show you this quick demonstration to show this, make sure that we have an intuition that when we create a thread, it is doing something uh, on our computer. And when we have many, they're operating in parallel as we've been discussing. This is concurrent and parallel, okay? All right, and that's it for this video.